and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Senzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have bet on Las Vegas, and I lost. Oh no, what did you lose? My dignity. Uh? Small investment. Well, nothing much then. So, how's that review coming out? It'll be out when it's out, sunny boy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Songs. Songs? Well, yes, you're I'm plural definitely now. singing at the Jailhouse Rock. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, in today's episode, we will be reviewing Season 6, Episode 20, Viva Las Pegasus. Written by Kevin Burkin and Chris Doc Watt. I think this is their second time writing, right? But anywho, in this episode, Applejack and Fluttershy are summoned to Las Pegasus by the Cutie Map to investigate a suspicious going on at the Grand Mains Resort. And said suspicion is the slot machines. They're rigged, yo. They're rigged. Well, duh. That's like common practice now. Oh. If mm-hmm. anything, it'd be a greater controversy if something were, weren't rigged. But it's rigged. How are ponies supposed to earn a living? By gambling. If that were truly the case, what a world we'd live in. <laughs> uh, but seriously, nah. It has something to do with friendship. Like always. But before we go on, first impressions are in order. So I think last episode I went with Safi. So Silver, you go first then. What do you think about this episode? Well, it stars my two favorite characters, Applejack and Fluttershy. So going into this, I thought this will either be wonderful or terrible. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm really stuck in extremes at this case. And thankfully, I thought it was wonderful. I loved Lost Pegasus. I loved the friendship quandary and the solution they had to undertake. I enjoyed the, the sheer sociopath <laughs> that is... Uh, Gladmane? Well, I'm suddenly blanking on his name. Gladmane. you got to be a special kind of awful to, to snub friendship directly to the princess of friendship's friends. And so... I thought it was fun from start to finish. A lot of great background characters, a lot of great moments. And Bo- this season has done a lot better job with the friendship problems of not making it just one pony has the solution. But we'll get more into that as spoilers follow. All right, then. And Sappy, what do you think? I actually really enjoyed this episode, surprisingly. Well, I don't, I haven't really had a refresher on the episode for myself, but I enjoyed glad man i enjoyed the conflict what i really enjoyed though was the ending and how they ended up duping you know glad man it was unpredictable for my like perspective when i was first watching it i didn't know what was going to happen next and considering mlp can um be a bit formulaic and cliches Mm -hmm. it was nice it was you know it was nice to actually see for once instead of thinking, okay, here's all the list of cliches that I can write down for this episode. Uh, all right. Because then. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Okay, I think I've gotten that point very, very clearly across. All right, all right. Well, as for me, I didn't know what to think of this episode because thus Pegasus, like, we've heard the news that it was a very terrible convention, but having it appear on TV? Wow. (laughs) Uh, Bad jokes aside, this episode was kind of cool. I didn't know what to expect. Having Fluttershy and Applejack as a combo, I don't think they... uh, Yeah, they appeared once in the comics. And that comic was subpar. was not good. Have we reviewed that one yet? Hmm, don't believe so. I think we did. Yeah... Yeah, we did, we did. It, it was not good because of the flying pig. Yeah. Hmm. I'd have to double I'd have to double check. I think you know you say it probably did. Yeah. But it was not memorable. Yeah, it was utterly disappointing. But still, this one is a big change. This one was much better. This one was above and beyond that comic. And them having nothing to do with Las Pegasus. They want to stay away as far as possible is the thing that makes it more awesome and memorable because putting a character in a very uncomfortable situation makes it more memorable because of the awkward scenes that they will do. That's our first impressions. 
if you have not watched this episode yet, please do go watch it. I do recommend this one. It's a really good episode. It's very entertaining. You get to see Fluttershy and Applejack fight a bit. Arr. So, if you have not watched it, please do. And welcome back. Thank you for coming back again, listening to us. We start off with Applejack and Fluttershy being summoned to the castle. Twilight telling them, Yo, the map wants you at Las Pegasus. And Applejack and Fluttershy says, Los Pegasus seems like a place suited for Pinkie Pie. Probably Rarity. Not us. And and Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash would probably sell off her home and several of her friends' homes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's horrifying to think about, actually. <laughs> oh, yep. And, well, they have to be on the positive side, right? Like, it can't just be a loud, obnoxious party all the time, Right? And I do like this one. It's just a poof away and nope, it's worse. It's much worse. Although what's funny is that Las Vegas is really is shown to be a more of a carnival or festival than a gambling resort. Yeah, I, I do believe that they have to kind of tone it down a bit because if you're smart, sorry, if you are well versed in what Las Vegas is, you get the general idea. But this is a kid's show, so portraying gambling on kids tv it's kind of a no no but they do have the crane oh, game yeah so that's oh, a bit of gambling oh come no, on no, they, no, had no, pokemon. No. they had friggin gambling in pokemon and nothing really has affected the youth today and besides i grew up on g1 transformers they had a transformer with a gambling problem he literally gambled away optimus prime <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's the PC in me right now that's talking because of how this world is. Probably, I don't know, we live in a PC age where everything needs to be politically correct. So them not doing the whole Vegas bit is kind of understandable. It's not fun, but it's understandable. Sissies. No comment on that one. I do want to see a slot machine in Las Pegasus, but getting the, whatchamacallit, this crane game, it's not bad. I wanted to find out that Fluttershy knows Blackjack. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> I'd love to see. This is why Fluttershy doesn't have to have a job. She knows how to how to beat the house. Oh, true. That. She counts the cards. And by the way, um, Pen and Teller pony in the background. Yay! Where is the Pen and Teller? Is that when they're in the... There's so many ponies. I mean, you could have a smorgasbord game of just playing spot the pony. Yep, but yep, it is. It is them, if you can really tell. Uh, want me to link you the pick? Sure, please. All righty then. Give me a second. This will be entertaining at home. But for those who are, well, playing at home, this is the scene where um we see the crane game. So if you look to your left, they're the pen and teleponies. Yay. Huh. Oh, yes, indeed. Huh. And yes, I know who Penn and Teller are, Silver. <laughs> At this point, I, I, I just tend to assume you don't. <laughs> Actually, I effort. do. Yeah. It's just an easier way for me to not have my heart broken and feel old. Yep, until proven otherwise. In this case, I do know who Penn and Teller are. Yeah, that's good. They make the very terrible um, bus game. Hmm. With intention. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Desert bus, yes. I can easily associate them with magicians, and one of them doesn't talk. Yep, but have yep. you seen the Desert Bus game? Oh my god, that is a really, really... Whoo. It's just boring. True. Yeah. But anywho, we see our ponies arrive at Los Pegasus being really scared and confused. It's loud and noisy and bright. They want to hide away in their cottages or farm. But still, they have to do a job, and... They walk around being really uncomfortable, thinking that this is not their scene. They're, they're more in the country kind of scene, where they want forests, they want quiet and nature. But everybody seems to have a real good time. So what's, what could go wrong, right? I mean, everybody's having fun and whatnot, and suddenly someone notices them. And said someone is the manager of said establishment, and that person is Gladmane, and he personally knows who Fluttershy and Applejack are. And I have to say, I am surprised at this too, because this is the first time a pony outside of close friends or relatives or even 
rivals who know who they are. It's about time too. I agree with that. I'm still getting over Jetstream and Upper Crust. Be like important ponies, these ruffians. Hey, you know that they have a stained glass in Canterlot Hall, right? Apparently <laughs> uh, not. Yep, yep. But still, this is a welcome change, and I do hope that this trend carries on for future episodes. But still, Gladmain is a really charming guy. He's the manager. He's a really friendly guy, and he is a connoisseur of friendship and everything to do with friendship. So he takes them to a tour of the place, the hotel, or the resort, showing them behind-the-scenes stuff, like introducing them to the trapeze act. Um, I'm a lost for word of who their names are, but yeah, we see the manager, we see the um, trapeze artist. Who fans have gone gaga for this pony. Oh yeah. Uh, by the way, um, I'll try to link this in the show notes below because fans have um, deciphered or looked at pictures related to said what you call this uh, posters in the background where they're related to real life posters. Um, for this pony, the trapeze artist, uh, it's akin to Cirque du Soleil. And one poster is, um, Chris Angel, Mind Freak, and another one is Britney. And the two ponies that we are introduced later with the, uh, pink and white gerbil, is it? Or I buy no gerbil. What was it called? Gerbil? Hamster? Whatever it is. Um, Hamsters, I believe, yeah. but based, the ones with the quite frankly stunning cheap. I think structure. they're prairie dogs, actually. Yeah, 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 prairie dogs. Not since Zesty Gourmand have we seen such a cheekbone structure. Yes, but their cheekbone structure is akin to Siegfried and Roy. Oh. Let's just hope there are no white tigers. We do get white prairie dogs. White prairie dogs, but for for Siegfried and Roy, I mean, they had an actual tiger accident. Ouch! That can be funny. I think people kind of take for granted they're training with live beasts. Yeah, true that. Never never underestimate the beasts. But anywho, after they're done with the performers, they go to the lobby. And well, we got two promoters. Really, really awesome promoters that sound very per- familiar. And Applejack <laughs> recognized those voices anywhere. And they're trying to sell tickets. Yeah, the close-up on Applejack's face when she realizes that is a pony consulting murder. <laughs> well, the, the last time she saw these guys, they nearly got her grandmother killed. Oh, true that. And who are we talking about? And well, audience of mine, we got Flim and Flam. Really popular, popular ponies. E. <laughs> They've got opportunity in this community to sell tickets. Though they're not really great at the whole location, location, location thing. Mm-hmm. Since they're in competition and they set up right next to one another. That is also true. And well, here's the thing that is kind of... What? They're fighting with each other? Why? Why would they be wah, fighting? Wah, wah, wah. And Fluttershy straight away says, Oh no, they're fighting. Could this be the friendship problem we're that the map sent us to? And Applejack straight out says, No. If we're going to help them, I'm not going to help them. You know, Applejack would defy the map if it, if it asked that of her. Yep, it would. And, well, th- this is a strange occurrence because those two fighting with each other? Why? It, it, it doesn't seem right. If you read the Friends Forever comic, they did this before and it was over a girl. But that's a mare. Yeah, a mare. But that's besides the point. So. Oh no, that's a mare. <laughs> oh you. When the moon seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's a mare. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But anywho. <clears throat> Flat- oh my gosh. Fluttershy decides to ask that mean, what happened? Why are those two fighting with each other? And, well, he explains that, uh, he, does he explain it? Or no? I, I can't remember. Well, he basically, Gladman kind of admits his strategy without fully saying it. He says, oh, they've been fighting for so long, and that's good for me, because they'd probably shake me out of house and home if they were working together. Uh Uh Uh-huh. 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 So basically, Applejack 
is so stubborn. She's like, I will find another friendship problem. Hell, I will make a friendship problem. Uh, if it means I don't have to help those two. Yeah, and Fluttershy is the more understanding one where she wants to figure things out. So she meets with Flim and Flem separately to figure out what's going on. And, well, she figures out that Gladmane is telling stories where he says that one of one of the brothers can't sell and one of the other is a pretty bad promoter. Well, truthfully, Fluttershy finds out that Flim and Flam have this thing going on, but it's Applejack who discovers oh. the others. She finds all the arguments. and I, Which do you guys think was the funniest argument? I'm going with Siegfried and Roy <laughs> yes, Ponies. I have to agree with that one because the timing and scene with this one is very funny because of those poor parry dogs they're just doing their trick because their master tells them to is it a tower no it's a pyramid it's a tower it's a pyramid oh please make up your mind and they're being very patient but they're thinking sir we will feast up on your flesh <laughs> Siegfried and Roy did it so we can do it too the great prairie uprising shall commence viva la revolucion <laughs> ah, so after Applejack finds out certain stories or finds out there's, that's the problem, she goes to Fluttershy and says, this is happening. And Fluttershy tells Applejack that's the same thing that's going on with Flim and Flam. And Applejack's not happy about it. Not at all, because now she has to own up to the fact, yeah, we gotta help him. And I do love that Fluttershy is kind of smug about hemming Applejack <laughs> in. We got a smug shy. Smug shy. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of smug shy recently. I like that. Well, th- well think about it. This is a much different flutter shy than what we've seen in past seasons. There's no way she'd even set a hoof inside of Lost Pegasus mm-hmm. at one point. Now she's being autonomous. She's not letting Applejack dictate mm-hmm. terms. And without being hostile, she's getting Applejack to pay attention. True that. And also, um, if we're not focusing on this... Fluttershy can tame a Draconicus. But still, once they agree on helping everybody, they go to, well, the best candidate for this, explaining the situation to Flame and Flam at what's going on, where Gladman is playing you like a fiddle. You guys should not be fighting. He's doing all this. He's manipulating you guys to fight with each other so that he'll be in charge, he'll be in power, he can, he has control over you. So, Flim and Flam shook hooves and um, stopped fighting to, well, get their revenge, per se. Hang on, because we're overlooking one important thing. The whole reason they can believe this is because of who's telling them. And it's all honest Applejack. They actually say, you never lie. True that. We should know, we tried to, we tried to make you. And, well, having the most honest pony in Equestria say something like that is um, reassuring. Well, at least you don't have to second guess. Oh, that. Although, honestly, can can you really expect Fluttershy to lie? Yes. Has she lied? Mm, I'm trying. Not as far as I'm... I don't remember any uh, recent memory of uh, Fluttershy lying, of all things. Well, not in recent Yeah, I'm, I'm coming up blank myself. Mm, I, I don't know. This could be hit... If, if anybody in the... Uh, Who's watching this remembers? Can you tell us in the link or in the comments? Yeah, true that. Because we are coming up blank. Yeah, <laughs> I do feel that she can lie. That's what I'm feeling. But maybe that's probably hit canon. But still, if any of you out there who is well versed in this know more than us, if Fluttershy has lied or attempted to lie, do put it down in the comments because I want to read it. I want to know what episode that came from. Even if it's in the comics, that counts too. I want I want to know what horrible deceptions lie behind that adorable face. Oh, true. That. Talking about lying, the next scene is, well, Flim introduced Gladmane to a very rich pony. A very, very rich pony from the rich family side, where she's well, really popular. She signs stuff. She does the whole gimmick that she doesn't talk to people because it wastes her energy and well she she has phlegm um, kind of be her voice and well Gladmane like any other pony wants to 
to try and see if he can make a buck out of her. Although, can we back up for just one second? I, I need to pull up the transcript, but Flim and Flam have like a playbook oh, of yeah. scams. <laughs> Well, Which, what does that say when you when you actually have so many deception methods? You have to have a playbook. I I don't know. Probably it's let me guess. Uh, it's called a hustle baby. Quite possibly. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know why the wiki always runs slowly on Firefox. Yeah, it's always when you really want mm. that time, that speed. It's always when something important comes up. Uh, but anywho, uh, you need the wiki now. Well, let's see here. Uh, how dare I? Blah, blah, blah. You never lie. Okay, so we've got the Cantalot 2 step, but you have to have chickens for that. The Baltimore flare. Fla- oh, well, Flim, his flare isn't what it used to be. Oh, my. <laughs> the high roller hustle. Oh, yes. That playbook. <sighs> yes. I remember that like it was yesterday. But I, 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 I actually want to know what Flim's flare is like. <laughs> How flairish are we talking? It's like, oh my, Flim! Oh god, no, if you know Ponyta, no, no, no. Boy. No, you do not, no, 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 you do not want to talk about in horses, please, no. I'm actually tempted, I'm actually sort of curious on what that actually means. I'll explain it later, off the record, but anywho, we, the, Flim and Flam do the cantaloupe hustle and, well, introduce, um, um, what's her name? Um, impossibly rich. Yes, impossibly rich. Yes, thank you, Silver. Uh, introduce impossibly rich, impossibly rich to Gladmain and, well, um, book a tour to the whole place later on. So they go backstage and, wow, Fluttershy makes a really popular pony. I think it's all the modeling she did. Really awesome. Well, cause, but she's wearing a green wig. Uh... I don't know how many pe- ponies actually recognize her. Not many. Not many. That's, and that's the goal. But she made that onesie look really good. Well, mm. let's see. Yeah. Sefi, what, what do you think of this plan so far? I say it worked out up until they, uh, you know. Watch it. Until Gladmane actually saw through the plan. Yep. Yep. And, Silver, what about you? I think it's a clever plan. I mean, we get, you, you know, you're kind of expecting the cliche of he falls for it and is revealed. Mm. Just that he owns up to it. So it's, they pull a nice double switcheroo, which is respecting the audience a little bit more than, uh, than what a lot of other shows would do. Well, the, the setup here is for Gladmean to be tricked by their con because, well, one of the things they expect is for Gladmain to reveal his secret, which is, I manipulate my friends. <laughs> but no, he didn't. He saw right through it. And, well, basically... Well, honestly, why would Gladmain even try to reveal that, especially to a total stranger, is what I'm sort of asking. Like, you'd assume he'd want to keep that a secret, no matter who you're uh, talking with, right? It's true, but here is what Silver mentioned, that the show is treating the audience with a bit more respect than what other shows might have done. Because in any normal show, uh, Gladman will fall flatline and sinker. But no, he saw right through it because, well, <laughs> he's not that dumb. He's been doing this for a while now. And he saw right through the Cantaloupe Hustle because he created the Cantaloupe Hustle. Let's see, it's a high, high roller hustle. Yeah, high roller hustle. But after their plan got foiled, they give up. Oh no, we failed. So, after them failing, they march right into Gladmain's office and demand that they stop what they're doing because it's not nice. And Gladmain being the obnoxious, um, what you call this, obnoxious type of character, he boasts. He boasts and tells that I've been doing this for a long time now, and there's no way in Tartarus that I am going to spill the beans. And then he he doesn't look to the right. Villain villain's crucial de- defeating characteristic lack of peripheral vision. Yep. Uh, so after that, <laughs> after he quote unquote reveal his plans, thanks to Fluttershy pressing the red button, everybody finds out, and well, 
they're not happy because Ladmin has been playing two sides of the coin, saying that one person is better than the other and saying that the other is bad mouthing the other. So yeah, you you don't do that. No, you don't. So they decide to well jump ship, and his resort is, lack of better word, bankrupt. Well, basically, he doomed. Yep. He's doomed forever. Yep. So, so when do we get the pony lynch mob? I want to see a pony lynching. It's also known as a pinching. <laughs> oh, God, no. I think yes. that's off screen. But anywho, once that's done, the hotel or resort closed down and it's under new management. And oh my, do you know who's managing this hotel? Flame and the Flam. Right? Guess, my friend. It looks like they're be really taking over the new resort. And oi, Applejack is all, Applejack is regretting this already. God help us all, I guess. Indeed. And episode ends. So, that was a really fun episode. What do you think of Flame and Flam taking over the resort? Well, they've always struck me as characters that they come in, they take your money, and then they scoot before they can be caught. Having them run a resort, that kind of requires them to remain stationary. Mm -hmm. And, well, I think this is a good change for them. They could be, quote-unquote, legit as far as Las Pegasus is concerned. I don't see them going legit like Eva's. Yeah, it's it's Las Pegasus. Legit is as far as you're able to get away with it. (laughs) Seppi, what about you? My thoughts on Slim and Slam going legit? Yeah. Yeah, no, that'll never happen. <laughs> Although it was nice for a change, like, to have them actually work with Applejack, which was kind of nice. But, yeah, no, I don't see them actually turning good anytime soon, especially now that they're running a gambling resort. Yeah, I, I, when, when I mean legit, I, I don't mean that they're the good guys. I, I just mean that they're established. They have their own place now. They're... Entrepreneurs, they have a business. Uh, yeah, maybe, but at the same time, it would cost a lot of dishonesty. Oh, pff, come on! It's a, it's the resort. It's Las Pegasus. They're gonna be, they're going to be lagging bling rigs. Uh, yeah, true that. But that's besides the point. So, final thoughts then, uh, Silver. What do you think? Well, this was just a fun episode all around. Uh, we got to see. A ton of background characters. That's part of the fun of these things. It's just seeing all the background ponies that are up and rolling. The high rollers, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gladmane makes for a great villain, though, uh, like I say, it takes a special kind of sociopath to basically mock friendship to two ponies on a friendship mission who know royalty and can basically shut you down with a word. Actually, that might be the one thing Fluttershy and Applejack didn't say. Yeah, hey, we're friends with the Princess of Friendship, and we know what you're doing, so we're going to have you evicted. But Silver, they don't have evidence that this is going on. All you have to do is get two ponies in the room and say, okay, what did Gladmane tell you? What did Gladmane tell you? Oh! <laughs> uh, but don't you remember for that cowboy arc? The princess don't have the power to harm the ponies. Okay, yeah. the, the less I remember on, on the... <laughs> Good, the bad, and the ponies, the better. Yes, true that. <laughs> also, also, as much as I love the comics, they I do not consider them canon. Yes, true that too. I was about to ask, what do you think of the Granny Smith and Flim and Flem uh, Friends Forever series? That was more character driven. This one is driven by the villain. This that the comic was Flim and Flam having a disagreement, a falling out between brothers. Mm-hmm. This one is uh, an actual villain is antagonizing the group, and so it all flows from him. So it's less about overcoming Flim and Flam's uh, dispute and more about just getting them to realize they've been duped with their multiple playbook, which is still probably the most fascinating aspect. How do they justify to themselves what they're doing? Like any other con artist. Well, con artists always like to blame the victim, as far as I can tell. They say, oh, you can't cheat an honest man. You're, j- I'm just taking advantage of your taking advantage. <laughs> uh, probably. And Seppi, what about you? Eh, I still really like this episode. I mean, like I said, it was unpredictable. It was actually written very well. And I kind of like the references of, you know, Lost Pegasus gives, even though... Actually, no, I need a vacation at Lost Pegasus, minus all the losing of my money. 
What did you say that you were good at gambling? Maybe. Like she, she's good at betting money. Winning uh, it is a whole other thing. Yeah, true that. Actually, I was at a uh, Vegas night a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I won a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, good on you. And as for me, well, this episode was fun. It was, how do you say, it was Vegas fun. The lights, the scenes, the action, the ponies, and Flim and Flam coming back, and them trying to con a con artist. It's really fun. This this is a really fun episode. Not knowing anything, not seeing spoilers, it's just a good surprise to see um, Flim and Flam back. And doing what they do best. It's fun. Driving Applejack crazy. True that. But too bad we didn't get a song out of them. I love songs by Flame and Flam. They have that kind of carnival circus type of theme behind them usually. But nah, no song. Too bad. Too bad, so sad. Yes. But anywho, Silver, what is next week's episode going to be? We are continuing the se- season 6 train, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I hope you're ready for some brainwashing. Oh, God. Because we will be talking about every little thing she does, written by Michael Vogel. Ooh. And an ep- an episode that really cements whether you're on the Starlight Glimmer train or not. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. But that will be next week's episode. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill, always bet on Hippogriff. I am Sapphire Heartsong, and always bet on... 16 black and we'll guys see you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show see ya adios bye bye so silver are you up so for some blackjack <laughs> I don't even know how to play I do that's good we can take his money see I, because I don't know how to play I'm not going to it'll be fun it'll be fun <laughs>